Hey guys, it's the Taxibility Two here, and for today's video, so I really want to do something very different in this video since this is the first time I'm really gonna do this sort of thing. But anyhow, Smash Brothers. This is by far one of Sakurai's. This is really Sakurai and Nintendo's biggest game, and definitely their magnum opus at this point. Smash Brothers. No matter which ever game you prefer, whether it's Smash 64, Melee, Brawl, Smash 4, or Ultimate, the latest one. No matter what, all of the Smash Brothers games will forever hold a place in everyone's hearts, including mine. See what I did there? But really, Smash Brothers throughout the past 20 years has kind of been getting a lot of, I guess you can say, either inspiration games or somewhat carbon copies. Most notably, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, PlayStation's Battle Royale, and some that doesn't really necessarily is a Smash clone, but definitely did give out a Smash Brothers feeling like Brawlhalla and a few more others. But there were also um, fan games that consists of either Smash Brothers related or is definitely inspired by Smash Brothers. One of them being Project M and also I think currently Smash Brothers 64 Remix. But then there's this one game that is by far one of the most popular at one of the most popular ones out there and has been around ever since a for like almost like almost a decade at that point. And that my friend was Smash Flash. Smash Flash was definitely something throughout its entire development, from the beginning of how it really began, and currently, like, the developers of the, of the Smash Flash team is currently making their very next game, now, currently, that will also be released in er this early of 2022, if you don't know, which is basically called Frame Makers. We'll get to that in this entire video. But this the video, we're going to be going through the history of what really of what Smash Flash came to be, along with the upcoming Frame Makers game that was once made by a single person back then, and that, my friend, was Gregory McLeod. So, so Gregory McLeod, or by his alias Cleog9, or the company's name itself, McLeod Gaming, is a programmer that has been making a lot of games since... I think around his early high school years, and you really don't, and you really have no idea how amazing this programmer can really be. So back in around 2003, you see one of the first ever games that McLeod was ever, ever was ever going to make during his high school years was on a Texas Instruments 83 or TI 83 Plus, if you want to talk about it. Yep, that's right. His first ever game was on a school calculator. Who would have thought? And throughout, and when he was programming, he pretty much had a lot of experience throughout his time, as his very first game that was released in 2003 was simply called RPG, and this was the very first game that was made by McLeod. And throughout his years of high school, and for the past, for the next few years or so, he's been making a lot of games throughout in in the calculator, and and occasionally some math programs as well. But uh, it then eventually ended in around at around 2005 with this last game being SIM Combat or Sim Combat, whatever you want to call it. And since then, he hasn't really he wasn't really able to make any sort of game since then, but was focused on other things such as obviously his high school life, but also a few flash animations. You see, right before Smash Flash was even a thing, this uh, McLeod was really was also a talented person who was also able to make a lot of different animations. His first notable one being, well, simply called his first movie. And I have to say, it is really not bad. The story is not bad, and the animation is pretty smooth. And I any anyway, I want to say smooth since this was really if you gotta and you gotta remember this was around. 2005 or 2006 at that time. And if you look at his archives from the official McLeod website, he was made he was able to make a lot of different sprite um a lot of different flash animations during those times. So like awkward situation, two different versions of World of Starcraft, the CCC, the CCC Young Young Man's Opportunity, School, and also the final three three ones being a a Super Mario World from episodes one through three. Where if you may have noticed, there are some sprites that you may notice from that was actually we will that 
that will be able to get implemented in one of the games that we'll be able to talk about. This was the beginning of Gregory McLeod's career as a programmer. But then, at mid-2006, this is when the era started. You see, around uh, mid-2006, Smash Flash was, was a game that McLeod had a hard time programming, as, as he only had at least a few months during those times, and plus he was like only 16 when he was first making this game. So you can definitely tell there were a lot of issues on making this game and all, but, that, but he eventually was able to publish it at around August 21st, 2006, and even, and even showed off a whole lot of different things. You can still play it to this very day, even though the Flash, even though Adobe Flash has been has been now defunct in everything, I think in like 2021 from what I remembered, but you can still play it with like a certain programmer from what I can recall. But yeah, Smash Flash, even though it's one of the most really, really well-known games back at the time, the gameplay itself was very odd. First off, the character roster was really interesting, obviously. Like, we got ourselves Mario, Luigi, Lloyd, Link, Zelda, I mean, Meta Knight and Kirby, even though Meta Knight's part of this, are not part of this roster, and Sonic. Keep in mind, this roster was shown off, and there were a few characters that were in this game right before their inclusion in the official Smash Bros. games, which I find great. And there's even some anime characters like Naruto and Yasha. And there's there's Mr. Incredible. Um Okay, I don't know why, but I guess they but they did stated that Mr. Incredible was the joke character in this game. I mean, I guess that's something, but uh yeah, that's really odd to say at least. But I think all of you may have noticed one thing about this roster, and that, my friend, is the amount of Sonic characters. Most notably, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Shadow, Super Sonic, and two original characters that was, I think, made by other people and was, you know, added from the for the sake of, you know, having some fan characters in there, because why not? That being Blade and Blue. Fan characters, fan Sonic characters was not to be expected in this game, though it was stated a while back that, uh, that this game was originally going to be a Sonic Flash game. I can definitely tell. The gameplay, like I was state like I was trying to say though, is very wonky to say at least. In the, because you are limited to at least five different controllers. The attack buttons and the buttons for moving is and for like the button and like the keys for your keyboard is pretty awkward for whenever you're trying to fight and all. And plus you get sent like 500 miles away whenever you get a smash whenever you get smash attack or you smash attack somebody across the stage and all. Yeah, this was definitely a very odd rough start for this one. But I mean just but even though the game may be wonky, there may there are also some other game modes that I really that will definitely keep you from playing from regular matches. And keep in mind these extra modes are the only ways you can unlock the characters. Playing like at least 10 or 50 matches is not gonna work. You're gonna need to do a lot of these criteria with a really, really odd button control and all. Like classic mode and adventure, those you know, those game modes are really difficult if you don't know what you're doing, and especially some of the stage. And especially some of the stages like emerald hill zone is one of the most difficult ones and that climbing through the skies is also very difficult if you don't attack the enemies in time there's also multi there's also the uh multi-man melee where we also got in 10 103 minutes melee 15 minute melee cruel melee and also burly brawl melee which from what i can from which from what i play it's basically fighting the same character and i really do also want to mention that this game yeah, at the time, this was definitely getting ripped from Melee. The menus itself, the music, and everything else. But fun fact, before we even get to the part of it, uh, before we get to the next part of Smash Flash's history, I do want to say that a fun fact is that Kira Buckland is also a part of this game. If you don't know who Kira Buckland is, she is a voice actress who voiced many different anime characters. And for this game specifically, she voiced the announcer and Naruto. And currently, she is currently voicing the latest character of the JoJo franchise, Jolene Kujo. So, yeah, uh, a JoJo reference reference was reference even before the JoJo anime came out. Quite bizarre, can I say it that way? 
But then, after, but after a while, the reception for Smash Flash had a bit of mixed reactions. One is that many loved it. The others may think that this is sort of an odd Smash ripped off. Though we got, and also some that said that the controllers and everything else is pretty wonky to say at least. Though, we gotta remember, McLeon was only 16 when he was programming the game around 2006. And he only had a few months when he was about to make it. But then, this is when things are about to change, as Smash Flash 2 was now in current development. But then, after the success of Smash Flash, many were really hoping for a sequel, as during 2006, Nintendo announced Smash Brothers Brawl, their next upcoming big game, which did announce Meta Knight, Sonic, and also a few other characters later on. And with, the, and with that, many fans were already begging for Mikley Yatame, another Smash Flash game, and it looks like he's taken some orders and decided to program it, and around 2007, he, fir he then released the first ever version version of Smash Flash 2. And you can tell this version right here is very outdated due to the sprite animations, the battlefield that is almost ripped straight from Brawl, and especially the logo that has the Smash Brawl logo except replace the Brawl with Smash Flash and then just add a very um, a very PNG looking too and all. And yeah, the gameplay itself was really odd and were only like four characters like Mario, Kirby, Lloyd, and Ichigo and, let and I'll let you know that Lloyd still has that same sprite since that since the very first version you can see why many were hoping for a Lloyd Urban respite but then again from what I remember um, Ichigo, like, Bleach, um, first was, got, got its anime adaption at 2004, and since this was 2007, I think it was around the time when Bleach was getting a whole lot of popularity. So, yeah, this was a very early version of the build. But as years went by, the character roster in the game was was growing even further and further. And around May 29th, or I think 21st, 2017, Smash Butters Flash was released. Or so sorry, I meant Smash Flash 2. When the game was officially out for its very first beta, when the character roster and the stage was growing, everything changed a lot from its HUD, the character roster, the gameplay, the UI, the game modes, everything else about it has changed. And yeah, there were some things that were removed during those past years, like scrap final smashes, some assist trophies, stages, and a few others, but you can tell that Smash Flash 2's beta was definitely one of the most hyped and anticipated Smash fans games of all time. And now, the character roster has changed so significantly. Yeah, sure, we may not have any, any of the fan characters anymore, or, you know, not having Cloud Strife, which is definitely sad, but hey, we got Black Mage here. But this also gave a lot of characters that feels like they should have been in the official Smash Bros. a long time ago. Not that I'm complaining, it just really feels like, given with that we've seen these characters in Smash Bros. Ultimate, and especially some and especially some that were assist trophies, many were really hoping for some of them. Like, Tails, Crystal, Rayman, freaking Bomberman, everything else, Lloyd Irvin and Isaac, which these characters never had a chance. And how and how can we not forget the almighty Waluigi? Yeah, I know many were yeah, I know some many were have something have something against Waluigi because you know everything else, but everything has changed. And especially the animation. Like the like the sprite animation, they've changed it so they they like they move and they definitely animate it so beautifully. The gameplay is very great. It's not wild anymore and you don't get smash like get, and you don't get smash attack like 500 miles away and it's definitely a very viable one and there's currently tier lists for the games at the, for smash flash 2 at the moment and we currently have more characters in the making with the latest one that was re that was released that being ganondorf the, g the game modes were even more funner than I thought. With, with single player games, really, we've gotten a lot of things. We gotten a few things. Classic mode is obviously there, along with a tease adventure mode that has yet to be somewhat announced. Since we don't really know when uh, this whole thing will get com will be coming out, we'll just have to wait until Smash Flash 2 is officially released. Since we gotta remember, this is currently in the beta version, and it's been around for over a decade. Keep that in mind. We also got in ourselves all-star mode and the events and the events are very fun all of them are very unique and especially some that are frustrating to deal with multi-man smash target smash everything else taps change and the stages wow they definitely up their ante when making these sprite stages very fluid 
And so with the success of Smash Flash 2, it read, McLeod did stated this, that, that even though Smash Flash 2 may be called a sequel to the original Smash Flash, it did, they, they, he did state it that it was just more of a reboot to the original one rather than a sequel. And I guess that makes sense since, like we mentioned before, the first one was very rough when it comes to its first programming on, I know, whenever you really think about it and all. Overall, Smash Flash 2 is one of the most received games and one of the most fan favorite fan games that the Smash community has ever loved. With more things coming along the way throughout this entire year, there's a lot to expect when it comes to McLeod Gaming and everything else. But while we wait for more updates, there is currently another big game that is going to be made by McLeod Gaming himself, along with a team that is coming out currently this early year of 2022. And that, my friend, is the announcement and the, and the upcoming indie fighting game, Framemakers. A game that is dedicated to, you guessed it, a lot of indie characters. So if you guys want characters like Adeline or Hollow Knight or Sans from Undertale, then you can expect some of those characters to be added in this game along with Shovel Knight. So seeing uh, Framemakers is definitely one of the most hypest things out there. You see, the, when the when the game Frame Makers was currently in development, it was re you see on Je on July twenty fifth, twenty seventeen, the beta version of Smash Flash two was currently at its best popularity. But like I mentioned before in this video, Adobe Flash was was then ended. Um, like on around the end of 2020 and I guess early 2021 and since then and even though you can still play Smash Flash 2 to this very day McLeod wanted to go well out with a very different game that is actually able to run things instead of just using Adobe Flash anymore So that's when he decided to make an initiative name which is called uh, McLeod next McLeod game and next which was currently which was there, which was back then the code name at the time a few years went by after the announcement of a McLeod of a new game that will be made by McLeod Gaming and Frame Makers was announced and the gameplay was definitely inspired by Smash Butters. But the thing is, is that unlike the other Smash fan games or some Smash clones, Frame Makers is more of ha has more of a unique spin to it, really. From what we've seen from the gameplay trailer of Frame Makers, the game doesn't really act like Smash Butters, as ledges are very hard to really grab, and especially having a knock and having a t and as you can see right here, each player has a, t a damage total represented by a number of arts at zero and increases as the damage taken. As player takes more damage, attacks will knock them progressively far away, making it easier to launch up the stage. Players are generally able to recover from back onto the stage being launched off, but failure to do will leave them out, falling out of bounds. Or Result in a KO. So yeah, this is definitely a little inspired by Smash Butters, but it does have, but it really, like I said, has way more of a unique twist in it. And there's even a lot, and there's even more characters that are that many did not expect to actually be playable characters, like Commander Video from Betra, Octodad from well, Octodad, Ultra Fish, uh, Boonjin from 3000 from Itil Do Slap City. I have no idea what that is, but I guess that's cool. Well, Taro from Down. Well, or Kane and the or Kane from Rivals of Ether, one of the one of the few Smash inspired games, and the Watcher from Slam the Spire. And there's currently a seven character that is that is about to be announced. We don't know when, but there's definitely going to be a seven character coming later on. There's even assist characters that uh, that has featured a lot of different characters from the indie from many different indie franchises, such as Fancy Pants Man from Fancy Pants Adventures, Tank Man from the from the iconic Tangman series and especially the logo and especially part of the logo of Newsgrounds. There's also the Ape from Ape Out, Lady Luck from Dicey Dungeons, Pizza from Chick Chikori, A Colorful Tale, and there's really gonna be, and there's gonna be more assists later on. Not only that, after the announcement of Frame Makers, there was also a Kickstarter that was going on. Sadly, it ended, and we didn't get, and we did actually get a lot of big donations from the Kickstarter. And here we've got on the subs the stretch goals of it of the games to of the donations for the Kickstarter. You can tell many were very excited by this, good, good judging by a lot of the donations here. As you can see, what we've gotten now due to the donations is that we've gotten an additional character, double stage count, or OC remix with original original with alternate original soundtrack. 
um, expanded assist list, free, free bets. I'm not too, too sure what that is, but that's definitely, but I guess that's something of a unique mechanic that'll be in this game. Family Jewels alternate original soundtrack, additional character super attacks, Alpha Rad plus Tomato, Mo, put Tomato Moto packs, additional character, a Nintendo Switch port. So for those who want this game on your Nintendo Switch, you can get it as it is also being currently planned at the moment. We also got even more guest characters, some post launch DLC characters, match modifiers, and, and, and for and finally with the animated character reveal. Sadly, we didn't get the four character reveal with four hundred and five thousand dollars. But hey, with around three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, we did at least get one character reveal. Which like I which like I've stated, we don't n really know when they're going to be announcing it. But we'll definitely have to wait very soon. Plus, McLeod will also be lead in Team Frey, which will who will, will who will be programming Frey Makers. Here we got ourselves Greg McLeod himself, Max Silverman as the game designer lead, Ramsey Cade, who is the art and animation lead, Jake um, Siegers, I'm sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, um, who is a game who is a game and web programmer. Um, art for art animation would be Mass. Super Soul Bros, who will be making the original soundtrack, uh, like Lick Hiji, who is who who is currently making the Pixar art, Steven Steven Borgers making also the Pixar art, and especially David Serrano, Carolyn Jung, and finally the most notable one that that really got me excited, and that is Kira Buckland, who will be voice acting the announcer again. So yeah, uh, Kira Buckland is has returned to reprise her role as the announcer and maybe voice a few other characters, but. Yeah, who knows? So yeah, Frame Makers is definitely one of the most hype, one of the most anticipated games. And like I mentioned a few times, this is currently going to be released at around early 2022, and will be available for Windows, uh, Linux, and uh, Mac OS. And like I've shown in the Kickstarter, it will also be planning to get a Switch port. There's also going to be many that are predicting some characters that will be coming for indie games, whether it's Shovel Knight or Hollow Knight or or whatever you're thinking. You can say that Frame Makers is definitely one of McLeod's best achievements out there. And that's really about it for the history of Smash Flash. Super Smash Flash 2 and Frame Makers was one of the best games and one of the best games out there. With Smash Flash 2 being a really fan favorite fan game and Frame Makers real and Frame and Frame Makers definitely one of the most hypest ones out there. But you can tell how far the, how far McLeod and Smash Flash has come to be. When McLeod was first making his games at his calculator, he then was able to make a game for um, you know that was mostly loosed off from Smash Brothers. Then when he was programming Smash Flash Two. We got to, it, it may have been a game that is that is very identical to Smash Brothers, but had a more unique twist to it. But then Frame Makers, which is def, which I really want to say that Frame Makers them itself is really one of the like Leod's best ever upcoming games out there. And you can def, and you can say that you can see how far Mick Leod has gotten through, has gotten very far throughout the years. So. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this history video of Smash Brothers Flash and what it really came to be when it first became a, when he first made a games on calculator to now make an unofficial game that will be coming for Steam and now for the Nintendo Switch. Really, this was really an incredible thing to see how far this game has gotten. So McLeod, so yeah, to McLeod Game It and for the Smash Flash 2 dev uh, developers and the Frey team and the Frey team maker team. Um, hope you guys achieve great greatness with this game and i hope you add more in the future but with that let me know what you guys think of this um little history video about the smash flash series like i said this was a very different different thing that i don't usually do in this channel but i did ask this about i did ask a question about this game yesterday and i just wanted to do this first as i was asked by one of my fans on this so with that hope you guys enjoyed this video and so leave a like comment subscribe um if you guys don't want to subscribe then that's completely fine by me hit the notification bell for more videos follow my twitter and i'll see you guys next time and remember this once a legend always a legend like a hell cut. <laughs>